Hi guys, welcome back to the desk corner. Today we've got a box and as all we artists know, boxes are very exciting things. Now this box has been sitting on my desk for far too long because I don't know if you guys could tell by my voice, but I mentioned in my last video that I came down with the virus, which very annoying. My voice was not sounding good for a very long time. So finally my voice sounds decent enough to film. And so we will be doing an unboxing today. Now this is very exciting. A company called Graby sent me this box of an art supply for me to test out on my channel. So I'll have some of their information and a discount code in the description box down below. Don't forget to click on that if you're interested. But for now, let's go ahead and get to opening this box. This box that has been sitting on my desk for so long and I am so impatient. Here we have the supply. Hopefully it's not too dark right now, but I didn't turn on my desk light because I know when I do unboxings, the lights definitely tend to reflect. Okay, so first we've got this little card that says nice to meet you, like a little greeting card, and it's got a couple codes on it, so here's a discount code. And also it has this little color to win $50 um, by posting on Instagram. And I think that's actually really cute. I think I've seen people doing something like this before. So I'll have to keep that in mind and maybe I will color this and post it to my Instagram. I think that would be so much fun. What do you guys think? Okay, let's go ahead and get to the supply. I could not be more excited. So here's the tin. And it's really, really pretty. The tin has like watercolor effects on it. Let's check out what we've got here. We've got the 36 watercolors, which you could see are kind of like a wide array of colors. And then it also comes with this, which I assume is a graphite pencil. Yep, I'm just gonna have to sharpen that. So there's a pencil. We've got this teeny tiny little brush, which looks really small, like really tiny detail brush. So I think for the majority of the time, I would probably be using this water brush. I do love using water brushes, and I'm curious how this one will compare to the one that I use currently. So there's that. And then we've also got an eraser here. Just a soft eraser, probably for the graphite pencil, obviously, and a little sponge. So we've got metallic watercolors and you're probably wondering what I'm going to do with them. Well, luckily I just bought this black Stonehenge cold press watercolor paper which will be absolutely perfect for testing out these paints. Now I know you're not supposed to try new supplies with a new paper, but I don't have any black watercolor paper and I don't think metallic watercolors would be quite as fun to use on just a normal like white sheet of watercolor paper. All right, I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and get to swatching these colors. This is my second attempt at a swatch chart. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The first time was on the back of this paper and it came out all sideways. Very unpleasing to look at, especially in a YouTube video. So I decided I had to redo it, which was okay. I had some brain fog creating this video as I was still a bit sick, but that is all right. Everything turned out okay in the end. Let's take a look at these colors here. You guys, this is a 36 set. That is not small for watercolors, so I was expecting a lot of these colors to be a bit similar to each other, and some of them were, but I liked that we got a nice assortment of blues, purples, greens, and pinks, very heavy on those colors. And then we do get traditional golds, coppers, and silvers as well. But I think you guys can already tell just from the first two rows that we do get a lot of those greens and pinks especially in those first two rows and I think that the colors are really pretty. I didn't have any issue with laying these down. I had to work in a couple layers sometimes to get them to show up of course over the black. Some of the lighter colors showed up a bit more easily than those darker colors but I think that is to be expected on black paper anyways. And this was just so much fun. I wasn't even annoyed or irritated that I had to create the swatch chart this second time. I was just having way too much fun swatching, you guys. It was just kind of magical. I've never used metallic watercolors before. So again, I was just having way too much fun. There's a couple individual colors you could see that didn't lay down quite as well or the pigment didn't pick up quite as easily. And I think one of those colors, yep, there it is. There's that one. 
That burnt red color I just swatched was so hard to get up off of the tray, but besides that, I didn't really have much of an issue with any of the others, and with a couple of layers, I was able to get all of them to show up pretty nicely against the paper. Then after I finished swatching, I thought the bottom was a bit boring and I decided to do a couple of little decorations and play around with the paints. So I was taking a look at this swatch chart and I looked at the color range, the color palette here, and it reminded me a bit of outer space because there's a lot of like blue, purple, pink tones in this set. I thought it might be fun to paint something in outer space, which I have not really done in a long time. It's been a couple years, I think, since I've done something outer space themed, and this seems like the perfect opportunity. So this is going to be a little bit crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I have taken out a page from this paper. So I've got another sheet here ready to go, and I think I'm actually going to turn it the other way around. And I think you guys know I'm hopeless at circles, so I'm definitely going to need to use these to trace. I don't want to use the graphite pencil though because that is going to be a bit hard to erase or get rid of, so I might just try and use a very translucent pencil, like maybe from the Polychromo set, and use that to trace the circles. So you know what, that's enough talking. Let's just go ahead and jump into it and I will figure out everything along the way like I always do. I picked the ivory color from the Polychromo set to do the tracing, then I realized why didn't I just pick an Albrecht Durer pencil because that would just dissolve since it's a watercolor pencil. Oh well, I guess I'll do that next time. I was not kidding about the brain fog, you guys, and this was my first artwork I had done since being sick as well. So I used the items to align the planets where I wanted them to be. I decided to make some of them go off the page a little bit so it looked a little more realistic. Plus this paper was pretty small and I didn't want to make it look any smaller or squished together. And then I figured out where I wanted them all to be so that the page was still filled up and didn't look unbalanced either. And here comes the most disastrous part of the entire artwork, my first layer with the paints. Why was this a disaster? Because I am not very good at circles. So I ended up making a little bit of a mess outside of the lines. We're going to ignore that for now and talk a bit about the paints themselves, which were so much fun to work with. I decided not to add the metallics to an already existing layer of watercolor underneath, which is how I assume a lot of people use metallics, because I am testing out this product on my channel. I wanted to see how opaque I could get those colors to be just by themselves with this set alone. The only cheating I did here was I used a normal white paint from my Senlier set to get some of those highlights on the planets, and that is of course not a metallic color, and I wanted to use that to contrast the metallic colors and make them stand out a little bit more, which I think worked out pretty nicely. So ignoring the messy circles here, I was having just so much fun laying down those metallic colors. Those golds, so gorgeous. And I didn't have any issue with the water brush. I really enjoyed using it. I love water brushes. I especially like using them for watercolor pencil, but for these paints, I think that the water brush worked out really well. I was able to get a nice concentrated amount of paint when I needed to. Oh, that's supposed to be Jupiter, and Jupiter was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> I don't know what I was going for with that one, but I wanted to use purple, because I hadn't used that for any of the other planets. My favorite planet that I painted was Earth. I think it turned out really well. I tried hard with all the formations, and I let the land dry completely before I added in the ocean, and I tried to make sure that the circle was not compromised, and that I didn't go outside of the lines too much. So Earth turned out really well. I think you guys will see a bit later in the video and let me know which one is your favorite, but honestly, I definitely put the most effort into the Earth and I think that it turned out great in the end. Then here I am adding some white paint to some of the other planets as well, just to bring out that metallic sheen a bit more by adding contrast and some highlight. And there's the ocean for Earth. That blue metallic color was so pretty. I don't remember which blue it was. Of course, these colors don't have names, so I don't remember which blue on the swatch chart it was, but I think it turned out very, very gorgeous. I added in some white to some areas of the ocean as well, just to make sure that it looked like there was some highlight. 
Of course, contrast is a little bit difficult to get when you only are working with metallic paints, which is hence why I had to go in with regular white paint a bit to make sure that we weren't just going to get mid-tones. Oh, poor Jupiter, I really messed up the stripes, which I think are meant to be actual clouds of some type of element. I don't know what the stripes actually are, but I really just messed them up in this painting. I was trying to go in and fix it. Oh well, the important part was that Jupiter turned out nice and purple and shiny, and that's all that I care about for this artwork. The relative sizes of the planets, of course, have no basis in actual science. I just wanted them all to fit on the page. And if you're wondering, yes, I did leave out Pluto, which is unfortunately not considered a planet anymore, but a dwarf planet now, which is a little bit sad that Pluto was downgraded because when I was younger and still in school, Pluto was still considered a planet for me. And it's a bit sad. <laughs> I was honestly really trying my best to not flip the paper around too much as I was working so that you guys wouldn't get dizzy because I know that that happens sometimes, but it was a bit difficult because when I'm working with circles, I want to get certain angles without going over the edge. I have so many challenges with circles that it's not even funny. Some of these smaller planets just ended up looking not so great because of that, but that's okay. I think I went in and fixed them a bit in the end, which you guys will see. So the hardest of all of these you would think would be Jupiter, but actually it was the sun because the sun was so big and massive and I wanted it to look brighter than the other planets. So what I did at first was just fill it with one of the brighter gold colors and a bit of that copper and some of the white paint along the edges. But of course that didn't dry quite as opaque as I wanted it to. So I would just go in and add more layers Here's an example of you guys maybe getting dizzy by me twisting the paper around, so sorry about that you guys, but I really didn't want to mess up the edges of the sun since it was the biggest one in the middle. And as that was drying, I decided to add some of this galaxy in the background, the clouds, the galaxy clouds is what I call them, because I thought that the background looked a little bit plain and just adding stars wouldn't have been enough. So I added some of these massive clouds with the white watercolor paint from my Saint Lier set. At first I was going to use some of the metallic colors to create that background, but then I realized I wanted the metallics to stand out and have the planets and the sun be more like the foreground of the painting and then just have that galaxy cloud look fall into the background and not stand out too much. So I'm glad I made that decision. And there I am adding another layer to the sun to make it even brighter. And I wish I had just used gold and not copper, but I think the copper made it look a little bit fiery. Bear with me for a minute here as I slow this down to real time speed, because I wanted to show you guys that I was outlining parts of the planets with my Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil to really make them pop out and have more of that highlight, but also to make sure they looked like they were in the foreground as I knew I was going to add stars to the background. I just wanted the planets to really pop and to create that extra pop, I had to go in with the white pencil but I had to slow this footage down because it was unbearable to have it sped up as I was spinning the paper around. It would have definitely made you guys dizzy. So I decided to just cut the rest of the footage where I do this with the other planets and just show you how I did it with Earth and basically you guys can figure out that I did the same thing for the rest. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to after I was done with that and I'm going to add Saturn's rings with the white pencil. Totally just winged it, but it worked out just fine, I think. And then I added the stars with some white gouache paint. And of course, since I'm adding the stars later, I had to like kind of dab them off of the planets as some of them would get on top of the sun or the planets. I used my white pencil then to brighten up some of those background clouds and also I went back to work on the sun a little bit. I wanted it to stand out and look more like a star, not just another one of the planets. So I really wanted to add some more white to make it look bright. And then I went the extra step of using some of the metallic paint again to create a nice gold sheen around it, a glow around it I mean, to brighten it up even more. Ta-da, here is my finished artwork, you guys. What do you think? I think I really like how this turned out. It's not my usual style, 
and it's definitely not ultra realistic but it was so so much fun I almost just want to put this painting up on my wall or something because I just had way too much fun making this and I had so much fun using the metallic watercolors we will talk more about those in a bit I just wanted you guys to see the final painting here it is and I'm excited to know what you guys think about this. Did you like how this turned out as much as I did? I did not expect to have this much fun, you guys. So there's the painting, and then of course our little swatch chart for these watercolors. Absolutely gorgeous, and had such a fun time using them. So let's talk a little bit more about them, actually. I'm going to go ahead and grab the tin. I'm actually going to have it off-center because I don't want the reflection to be super distracting. But just to talk a little bit more about what we get with this set, I really did like this water brush. Of course, now it's full of the water too, so I don't want to keep it in here any longer. But I love the water brush this came with, and this very, very tiny detail brush, of course, might be useful for some of you guys. And the graphite pencil that this came with was not bad quality either. I honestly just tested it out on a little sketch paper because it, it is a graphite pencil after all and I was just trying to get some of those silvers to show up a little bit on the white paper so I did do that test as well I didn't end up using this sponge and if you want to see how this eraser works I can just hold this up and erase some of the graphite I think it just kind of rubs it out just like a normal eraser would Then I wanted to make sure I was testing out the different items that we get in this set for you guys as far as the paints go, as you guys can see in the casing here, some of them are cracked like this one, that one, this one, and this one, a couple of these as well, but I really didn't have any issue with the laydown of these. I did point out a couple colors as we were doing the swatch, like this one for example, that were hard to pick up and then lay down on the paper, but for the most part it was pretty consistent. I liked using the paints and I had a fun time with them. And I'll definitely use them again in the future. So thank you, Gravy, for sending me these. Of course, this is inside a, a little plastic holder, and I kind of just want to take out all the accessories from there because I don't like these little plastic holder things. And I'll just keep these separate from the actual paints. As I mentioned before, the link to this product is going to be in my description box, plus that discount code 15% off all the items in store at Graby. So those links will be down below. Thank you again Graby for having me try these out. I really enjoyed it and had a lot of fun in this video. I think that's about it you guys. I guess I will show you again the final swatch chart and artwork here that I'm very happy with and had a lot of fun making. I think this was just what I needed after being sick and feeling kind of bleh and dull for a while. Just something fun like this. I'd love to know if you guys have tried metallic watercolors before and what you think of them, or if you've tried anything from this brand. Just let me know in the comments below, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope that you had as much fun with it as I had making it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.